We're going to turn here now to South Africa, and we are very honored to be joined here by Sabu Zakode, who's the founder and president of Abba Hali Bes Majoldo, the Shack Dwellers Movement in South Africa, which is struggling around many important things and unfortunately is facing a wave of repression. Sabu, thank you so much for being back with us here on the Freedom Side. Thank you so much, and um, I am pleased to be with you. Uh, thank you for having me. Well, we really thank you. I know that this is a tough time for everybody with Abahali, given that you just lost one of your close comrades to a political assassination. And I was hoping maybe just to, to start there, um, um, tell us about this comrade and what took place uh, that led to him, him being killed. Well, I must say that our hearts are heavy. Uh, we are really devastated. We have just lost one of the greatest leader our movement has ever produced over the past few years. A young man, uh, he's a, at least 28 years of age, Lindo Kuhle Mguni, who was a chairperson of Abashali Basem Jondolo in a Kenana branch in Durban. Lindo Kuhle was the Keda that was responsible for providing leadership, but also for building a commune in the Ekenana community. So uh, Lindogushe was gunned down by two unknown men in, her, in his home in Ekenana on the, the morning of the 20th of August. Along with Lindogushe was um, his partner, Cindy Siwengobo, who was also shot three times uh, fortunately, Cindy Sewell survived and fought for his, her life in, uh, in hospital, but Lindo Gouche died on the scene. Uh, we are very devastated by this ongoing um, attack. Lindo Gouche is the fourth activist of Abashali to have been gunned down within the space of six months. Uh, you will recall that on the 8th of March, Ayanda Ngila, one of the greatest leaders of Abashali, was also gunned down in a broad daylight in a very same community of Ekenana, while the entire community was watching, women and children were watching uh, in this uh, terror that took place on the 8th of uh, March. Within the same week, on the 11th of March, Siabonga Mangele in the nearby settlement uh, was also gunned down by what was suspected to have been the police who were raiding in the area. And on the 5th of May this year, a young woman, Nogutula Mabaso, was also gunned down. This is a woman who was also an activist, but, but also a chairperson of Abashali. Now, on the 20th of August, at about 1.30 a.m. early in the morning, there comes these two gunmen, whom we believe that these are hitmen who were somehow hired paid to kill this young leader. So uh, Linda Wilhelm Gono is a fourth um, activist to have been assassinated within the space of six months. We are really torn apart. What, what is, can you explain what are, I mean, ob obviously we can speculate here, but who is, who do you believe is behind these assassinations? What's the reason? I mean, obviously your movement is involved and getting access to land and housing. Uh, so, you know, is this attached to oligarchs? Is it attached to the state? Who's behind this? Well, the killers are known. Uh, some of them are behind bars as we speak. These are local African National Congress leaders, local leaders. This is the ruling party that was once a liberation movement in South Africa. Um, the same a uh, gentleman who's behind the killing is also a fake pastor uh, who has a control over the local police, uh, who also has a vested interest on the occupied land in which the settlement uh, is occupying. So basically, they want to remove the entire community in order to build property so that they can make profit uh, um, uh, for themselves, um, because this community is only... Um, wanted this land to build houses, to send housing for themselves, but also to engage in the urban farming. Uh, they have a community gardens that is so progressive. They have um, poetry, they run cooperatives, they have a, a political school named after Franz Fanon, 
they have crash. So this is one of the progressive community that really do not want to depend on the state. They are engaged in what we call full sovereignty in making sure that there's food security for everyone in this community. And this is what they are being killed for. You know, I, th- I think for many people, you know, looking at South Africa and of course, and, and you know, remembering the long struggle against apartheid, uh, you know, they see things like this and, and, and I think it makes them wonder, you know, what does that mean about where South Africa is today? What will it take to gain true liberation? Because obviously seeing freedom fighters gunned down uh, shows that there's still so much more left to do. Well, it means two things. One, it means the liberation movement that was once trusted, that was once an inspiration in this country, um, is collapsing. And uh, before it collapses, then it wants to blame everyone that it's losing ground, it's losing power. But the second thing, it means the end of our constitutional democracy that was hard won by the people of South Africa, supported by international communities who really help us to bring down apartheid to its knees. It is unfortunately that those who were oppressed uh, before have now become the better oppressors. This is what we are uh, uh, seeing today. I, I'm curious, you know, not to pivot too hard here, but I feel like you could probably tie this in because it is the 10th anniversary of the Marikana massacre, uh, which I, th- I think it was something like 30, over 30 uh, Afri- or South African miners were killed by the police uh, during a strike. And I'm curious if you could tie that into some of what you're saying, uh, because n- there hasn't really been any justice uh, for that. Yes, I mean, it's just um, over a week now, South Africa and all of us have been moaning, standing in solidarity with the working class, particularly the miners who have really at least 34 miners were gunned down by the state sponsored um, uh, uh, massacre. Um, up until today, these miners, widows, children who suddenly became orphans remained um, uh, without any compensation or the state is refusing to actually account for these massacre. So it is unfortunately uh, that these people have been killed in the hands of government who is supposed to be the custodians of our constitutional democracy. So that tells you that South Africa is in trouble. We are now reversing all the gains that were had won by the people of South Africa the state that is supposed to be the custodians, uh, the protector of our democracy, is now attacking. Now, the bigger question is, if they kill us, who are they going to govern tomorrow if the governed are being killed by the government? This is the question that we are, are asking in this government. Like in Abashali today, police are not taking responsibility. Uh, they are not moving swift in protecting the community of Ekenana. I mean, Abashali has lost at least 24 activists in the past 10 years. So this recent killing uh, on Saturday is the 24th of the activists who have been killed with impunity. I mean, you know, it's in many ways it's amazing to hear. It's tragic on so many different levels, but it, it just, you know, in some ways, the fact that you all are being targeted so heavily, I think, does speak to the vitality of your of your work and what you're able to do and the number of of masses you're able to unite. So, I, I mean, if you could talk a little bit more about the work of Abahali and and the work that you're doing and the struggles that you're waging. Yes, I must say that we are inspired. In fact, we have deep love for humanity. Um, You will recall that the agenda of Abashali is very clear. We want to build an equal and a just society based on respect and dignity for all humankind. Since our focus is on urban areas, urban slums, what we call shack settlement, it is our daily struggle that everyone has a decent housing. Uh, In order for us to have this decent housing, we really have to occupy vacant and unused land because the land in South Africa remains in the hands of the minority white commercial farmers. So the black South Africans only received political freedom in 1994 
Economically, we are still poor and we live in deep poverty. So South Africa is known to be one of the most, if not the first, inequality, um, one of the most unequal society in the world. So our way basically is to democratize settlements of Abatlali, is to organize the working class and the impoverished, is to educate our communities around the constitution of the Republic of South Africa and international laws. But most importantly, what we do, we try to humanize the world. We want to build an inclusive economy, a world that embraces every human being. So this is what we want to see, so that everyone is happy, everyone can enjoy life, equal opportunities are really given to every human being, not just South Africans or the region. We also believe in the international solidarity within global communities need to reject any form of violence anywhere, everywhere, at any time. And where can people follow what's happening with your organization? What's happening um, in these, I mean, in South Africa in general, what are some like maybe media outlets or uh, websites that people can look to for information about that? Because oftentimes, I mean, this stuff isn't really being covered uh, by the mainstream media, by the international media. Well, um, Abashali has a very beautiful website, a colorful Facebook page. It's www.abashali.org. So we can actually be reached there, O plus 27-31-304-6420. Uh, we want to make a plea and we want to make an international call that our friends, our partners, our comrades, and those who are progressive, uh, who love democrats and humanity, we call on for international solidarity um, that uh, we are under attack here. And of course, we do not know who's the next. Uh, so the slogan that is with Abathali in this week, am I the next? So there's so much of violence in this country, gender-based violence, violence against the minority, violence against the LGBTIQ uh, plus communities, uh, violence against women and children, we are saying enough is enough. Well, Subu, we really appreciate you. I know it's late over there, but giving you some of uh, our, your time here on the Freedom Side, helping to inform us all, and I hope everybody goes and, and shows their solidarity with Abahali. But thank you again, Subu Zakodi, the founder and president of the Shack Dwellers Movement in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.